Hat, sunglasses, Pepsi, notes, sources, thick skin, check. You already know. Let's go. Welcome to Golden Blue today, everybody. This is the College Football Channel. So if you like college football, hit the like and subscribe button. It's that simple. Also, send gear to represent your team and be a part of my background forever. All you have to do is send it to P.O. Box 360, Liberty, South Carolina, 29657. And don't forget to check out our Patreon page. We have a lot of great perks over there. The perk that people seem to enjoy the most, of course, is the score prediction contest where we award $20 every single week to whoever gets closest to the actual score of the game that I pick. We also did a championship week. I will award $25 to that winner and right now is the best time to join patreon because we are going to do the bowl prediction contest first place prize will win fifty dollars second place prize is an autographed golden blue dude flat bill hat and the third place prize is a shout out and the more patrons we get the higher we can bump up the prize so if we get up to three hundred dollars with the patreon pledges we will bump up the prize to seventy five dollars if we get up to four hundred dollars with the patreon pledges we'll bump the prize up to a hundred dollars and so on and so forth so there's even an incentive for current patreon members to encourage encourage other people to join Patreon. That way the price goes even higher. I'll leave the link to the Patreon page in the description of this video. Carlon, Carlon, who's in the Carlon? Me, Golden Blue Dude, that's who. And on top of that, it's uh, it's kind of raining outside, so uh, we'll do the best I can. A lot of these have turned out well, but uh, I'll let you be the judge and decide whether it's a good one or whether it's a flop. Also, check out Mayhem Matthew. He has a great football YouTube channel. We had a bet that South Carolina would reach eight wins. I took the eight wins. He took the under. Of course, South Carolina got to eight wins, so I won that bet, and he was a man of his word. So I strongly encourage you to go check him out. He's got some great videos over there, and we will be doing some collaboration in the near future. Anyways, today I want to talk about, oh, you guessed it. Conference realignment. And whether you're sick of it or not, I'm obsessed with it. So I'm going to keep talking about it. And today I'm going to focus on the Big Ten. I still think that the Big Ten is not done. I still think that the Big Ten is going to expand and they're going to expand west. I do think they'll pick up some teams from the ACC, but I've already talked about that. Let's talk about some other teams. I'm talking about teams out of the Pac-12 and possibly the Big 12. Yep, both conferences could be at risk, well, for the Pac-12, again, as far as getting picked apart by the Big 10. We already know that UCLA and USC, they're headed to the Big 10. That was announced this past July. So that's happening. The Big 10 is officially a coast-to-coast -coast conference. I think that was a great move. And now they can just kind of, you know, fill in the gaps in between the West Coast and the Midwest. I think it was a brilliant idea. Now, let's look at some teams that they could go after now. Now, first things first. We already know that Oregon and Washington have already applied to the Big Ten, and the Big Ten has already turned them down. However, I still think that they're on the list for the Big Ten. Here's, here's the list that I have for the Big Ten that doesn't include any teams out of the ACC. So, the teams that the Big Ten could go after. Some of these might surprise you, but most of these probably won't. So, here you go. Here's a list. Kansas. Yeah, I think Kansas is on the list. Colorado, Oregon, and Washington. I still think those two are on the list. And, of course, Cal and Stanford. Cal and Stanford more for academics and their research. Because, remember, once you join the Big Ten, you share everything around. So, if you have something of value, it gets shared around. And, of course, Cal and Stanford, they do have stuff of value that's not related to football that can be shared around. So, yes, they are firmly on this list. And they could be used as a drawing force to get Notre Dame. They've already gotten USC. They have Michigan, which is actually a bad thing. Michigan is the main reason why Notre Dame hasn't joined the Big Ten, but they're they're kind of stockpiling the rivalries of Notre Dame to try to draw in Notre Dame. That's why I think it's not completely out of the question for the Big Ten to go after Boston College. I mean, they've already gotten Rutgers and Maryland, so, I mean, what big of a difference is Boston College? Maybe it's even a little bit better as far as TV media market. And don't forget about Navy. Navy is a big-time rival of Notre Dame as well. So the Big Ten could go out of the way to get Navy if it meant for sure Notre Dame would join the Big Ten. Anyways, let's talk about these candidates. Well, I just talked about Cal and Stanford. Academics, research, all that stuff, that goes around, and that makes them very, very valuable, and I do think they're firmly on this list, and I think it's highly, highly likely that eventually the Big Ten will get both Cal and Stanford, and that's a great little rivalry as well, and that's two more California schools. You are having UCLA and USC, and then you're adding Cal and Stanford. What about all these other potential candidates? Well, I've already talked about Oregon and Washington. 
but I still think that those two are at the top of the list. I know the Big Ten has already turned them down, but maybe that was a time situation. Maybe it's in the future that they will accept Oregon and Washington. Oregon and Washington both they check all the boxes needed to join the Big Ten, and it gives them two more teams out on the West Coast. And I think Oregon and Washington are the biggest remaining football brands in the Pac-12 above everybody else. So yes, I still think they're high on this list. Then there's the last two teams, Kansas and Colorado. And I think Kansas is more valuable than people realize. We already know that Kansas is a basketball blue blood they are one of the highest revenue generating basketball programs in the entire nation. So that in and of itself makes them very enticing as far as a candidate to add for conference realignment. But on top of that, they are starting to invest into their football. Lance Leopold is taking Kansas to a bowl. Kansas will play Arkansas in a bowl. Should be a good bowl game. I think Arkansas will win that game. But still, I think it's going to be a good bowl game. And that's a big deal. Kansas is usually bottom of the barrel. Maybe a couple wins if they're lucky in a football season. Of course, we all remember the magical 2007 run, but there's few and far between as far as successful seasons for Kansas. So that's a big deal, going 6-6. Six and six. And Kansas started out really, really hot. I thought they could finish as high as 7-5 and five or 8-4, and four, but 6-6, six and six, that's still good for Kansas. On top of that, Kansas has extended Lance Leopold as a part of a bigger deal. Now, to go along with that, Lance Leopold accepted this extension with certain criteria. The main one is investing into the football facilities, and that's exactly what Kansas is doing. They're investing $350 million into the football facilities. Kansas is actually investing money into their football program. That I never thought I'd say that, but they're doing it right now. And and the timing of this is very interesting because conference realignment is a big time thing right now. So maybe they know something that the rest of us don't know. Maybe the Big Ten told them, hey, the one thing that you're lacking on is your football facilities. If you want to join the Big Ten, you have our attention. We do want you. But guys, you have to get better at football and you have to invest in football and you have to start making more money in football. Could you imagine if Kansas started making a lot of money in football? They already do it on the basketball side. That would be a double-edged sword for Kansas. They would be very, very valuable. And that's why I think Kansas is high on the list as far as a candidate for the Big Ten. The other candidate just caught my eyes this past week. Before this past week, Colorado to the Big Ten, I probably wouldn't have even given it a second thought. But they made a huge, huge move in hiring Deion Sanders. And immediately, over 200 recruits and players in the transfer portal have reached out to Colorado and Deion Sanders with big-time interest. On top of that, massive amounts of NIL donations have come pouring into Colorado. They are actually starting to make a ton of money for NIL. That way, they can attract those bigger players. So the biggest knock on Colorado was their football product on the field. It looked terrible. This year's Colorado football team was one of the worst, I'm talking all time, the worst football team I've ever seen and maybe in the history of college football. Not only were they 1-11, but they averaged 15.4 points per game, 127th. That's four places out of last place. But they allowed 44.5 points per game, which was last place, dead last. Point differential, negative 29.1 points per game, also dead last. I'm telling you, historically bad. So they made a great decision, and now they might have the interest of the Big Ten. On top of this, people forget, the Big Ten already has Nebraska. Maybe Nebraska is in the ear of the Big Ten and saying, hey, we would really like to renew our rivalry with Colorado and Kansas. We had some great rivalries. I'm telling you guys, it would bring in some revenue. You already see Kansas has a great basketball product. Now they're investing in their football. I mean, you're seeing it, right? We want them in. Go get Kansas. Then there's Colorado. I know. I know they had a terrible, terrible football team this past year, but they just hired Deion Sanders. And look at that NIL money. Come on, guys. This is a win-win situation. So the rivalries that would be renewed, Nebraska-Kansas, Nebraska-Colorado. That's probably the biggest one, Nebraska-Colorado. And, of course, Kansas and Colorado. Could you imagine if somehow, some way, the Big Ten was able to entice Missouri from the SEC to the Big Ten. That four-team rivalry, Kansas, Nebraska, Colorado, and Missouri, that would be a crazy, epic battle in the Big Ten. And never say never on that, by the way. Number one, Missouri has not been a good fit in the SEC. I know, I know, they started off hot in the SEC, winning the SEC East multiple times. But first of all, in the SEC East, why in the heck did they put them in the SEC East? That made no sense whatsoever. And ever since that 
hot start. Missouri has not been a good fit in the SEC. And remember, the Big Ten has comparable money to the SEC. And maybe Nebraska is the one pulling the strings on this particular decision. I'm all for this. I think it would be great. I love rivalries in college football. I hate that conference realignment has broke up a ton of rivalries in college football. And of course, West Virginia has been one of the teams that's been most affected by the rivalry breakups. We don't get to play Pitt every year. Yes, every once in a while. That's great. That's awesome. But every year, that was our thing. That was the game that we looked forward to. And on top of that, Virginia Tech, that was also a heated rivalry. If you were in the southern part of the state of West Virginia, you actually looked more forward to Virginia Tech, West Virginia, over Pitt and West Virginia. That's how big that rivalry was. And then don't forget about Louisville, Syracuse, Boston College, Miami. It just sucks that we don't get to play those teams anymore. But we aren't the only ones that were affected by that. Missouri was affected majorly by joining the SEC. But hey, money talks. They're getting paid a truckload of money to be in the SEC. And at least they've been getting to play Arkansas and Texas A&M. And now that Oklahoma and Texas are joining the SEC, they'll also get to play those rivals as well. So maybe ultimately, after we get out of this in-between stage, ultimately, a lot of these rivalries will actually be coming back together. So we'll see what rivalries get reunited in the future. So y'all let me know in the comments section. What do you think about the possibilities of Kansas and Colorado headed to the Big Ten? How big of a chance would you give those two teams joining the Big Ten and the Big Ten accepting? Number two, do you think Kansas investing into its football program and Colorado hiring Deion Sanders could be a major persuasion for the Big Ten to add Kansas and Colorado? That's all I got for you for this show. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you on my next show.